So my name is Jens Isler. Hope you feel well, either at home at, or at the office. And Pierre and me, we uh, would like to share with you um, an introduction, technical introduction to our brand new topology optimization tool. And so the idea would be, let's move to the agenda, to first talk about motivation slash business challenges, move then on with doing a deep dive into the optimization method itself, how does the setup looks like, the post-processing validation means the whole workflow. Um, after that, we will talk about suitable application examples, show you extended workflows where topology optimization is embedded, and finally conclude what we discussed today. So let's start with the business challenges which are especially uh, true for the automotive industry, where according to available regulations, future and um, existing regulations, um, there is a need for the reduction of CO2 emissions and which is coupled to that, the improvement of the combustion engine performance. On the other hand, there is a need, and this is especially true for electric vehicle, to reduce the consumption of energy, of electricity, and furthermore, improve the passenger comfort. Now, the traditional, typical way how to address those objectives, on the one hand for the exhaust emissions, is that you improve the efficiency of the uh, combustion, or you reduce the vehicle mass, me or on the other hand you could um, reduce the vehicle drag in order to reduce the electricity consumption you can simply improve the efficiency of the fan and with this at the end reduce the consumption of electricity now if we think in that way we totally ignore one essential component which is available more or less in any fluid system representing the fluid ducts and in fact this component may have a significant impact um, on the efficiency of filters, heat exchangers, on the operational behavior of pumps or compressors. Therefore it really makes sense to to think about how simulation technology can be can be applied in order to um, to to design such to develop such components. And one efficient approach in order to obtain in an automated way individual innovative design ideas represents topology optimization. With topology optimization you obtain a tailored design um, or an, an individual design tailored to the available flow physics and as you can see by the animation on the top right hand side it's not starting from an existing design but what we call the available design space and as the design is really a fully three-dimensional individual one um, this tool shall be used in an early stage of the product development process so why while um, topology optimization plays already a significant role in the structural mechanics, it's still a niche application on the fluid side. Why is this the case? Well, so the picture on the bottom right hand side shall give you an idea, means multiple tools are needed in order to go through the topology optimization workflow. We need a CAD tool in order to create the design space geometry and at the end the reconstruction of the design proposal we need a CFD solver and an optimization tool in order to set up and run the optimization and then viewer in order to inspect the obtained design proposal. Furthermore, the design proposal that is obtained from the optimizer is typically not and CAD geometry but represents a tessellated surface which means that a time-consuming and potential painful CAD reconstruction process has to be done afterwards. 
Last but not least, we have a disconnected workflow. Means we have a CFD solver and optimization tool where the optimization itself is done. And on the other hand, we have the CAD tool where the reconstruction needs to be done. Means uh, there is a need for a data transfer between the CFD group and the CAD team, which creates also or additional um, delay in the overall development process. And in a worst case, the optimization is done um, based on an obsolete CAD geometry. Now, how can we fix those issues? Well, so in order to, to, to fix them, uh, we have developed a new topology optimization tool which provides an end-to-end -end workflow where all needed steps are included starting from the design space creation to the final validation of the reconstructed um, design proposal. Important to, to mention here is that this process includes an automated conversion of the design proposal into a closed CAD surface and what is available as well are um, reconstruction features in order to simplify or adjust the design according to available manufacturing constraints. According to the picture on the right hand side we can also state that the, um, the, the optimizer is embedded into a PLM environment, namely the Sweet Experience, and as a result of this, um, the CFD solver and CAD geometry are directly linked together, which in other words means as soon as the geometry will be changed, this will automatically be visible within the CFD model. Now the key question is who is the the, the uh, user being targeted here. So of course on the one hand it's the CFD engineer but the tool is also and especially meant for an CAD engineer of course uh, with basic skills regarding the uh, fluid dynamics and a distinct knowledge ideally on uh, CFD solvers and as a result of this we need an, an straightforward setup in order to go through the, um, the the optimization process at low friction, which of course means that we provide a flow assistant which guides the user going through the setup process. Additionally, the flow physics are mostly predefined and the meshing will be done absolutely totally in the background. Now the question is what are the needed input that needs to be provided still? Well it's on the one hand the boundary conditions for inlet and outlet, the material, of course the body which shall be considered for the optimization and the overall iteration number. Now if you ask what's about the objective? Good question. So the objective is always the same. It's minimizing the amount of recirculation. And if this sounds familiar to, to you, it's in fact the same optimization approach as it is available in Tosca Fluid. Now how does this work? Well, so after you have uh, defined the required inputs and submit the optimization, what then will happen is a two-step procedure where in the first step the ideal flow field will be deduced by a potential flow field analysis and in step two, this ideal flow direction is then applied in order to identify recirculation zones and prevent the flow inside of those backflow areas, what we call the sedimentation process. And as a result of this, the velocities become here more or less zero. Finally, when the sedimentation process um, is finished, the amount of sediment is cells does not change anymore, the optimization is finished and the new design is represented by the free flow area shown here in light blue and the new wall represents the transition between free flow and prevented flow area. 
and the provision now of a design without any recirculation zones is obtained by going through or by applying a simple but efficient optimization approach which additionally as we have a strong correlation between minimizing the amount of recirculation and pressure drop provides typically and significantly reduced pressure drop for the design proposal. What we also see is a correlation for flow uniformity on the one hand and mass flow balancing on the other hand. Uh, so there is, it's likely that those parameters um, may be improved as well. And just to keep in mind, so this is obtained <clears throat> without the need of any sensitivity information, means there is no need in order to provide a high-end quality mesh and as a consequence of this um, res residuals of the primal run, primal server run of up to an order of minus 10. Now the question is which CFD server is applied here and in fact it's the uh, in-house uh, run server available in the Swede experience representing a self-centered scheme with a segregated and coupled solver for incompressible and compressible flows providing a simulation for steady state and transient simulation. On the meshing side a hex dominant measure is available as well as an, an, an TED measure uh, which allows the creation of hybrid meshes with TEDs and prism layers. Important to, to mention is that the hex dominant measure allows an automated fluid volume extraction, um, which means that one can directly start the um, setup of a CFD case based on the solid geometry. Now for the topology optimization, we uh, provide a predefined set of physics where the flow is considered as isothermal and incompressible and the flow behavior is treated as in steady state, turbulent and single phase one. Now with this uh, I think we are ready for a video where an entire uh, topology optimization workflow was conducted for an HVAC duct and of course the first step is always to provide a design space geometry which is then connected to the frozen zones upstream and downstream. Important uh, to, to mention here is uh, you can provide the geometry again as a solid. The fluid volume will then be automatically extracted. All the need, uh, that the user will need to provide is the location of the opening and the correct orientation of the inner surface. And with this the extraction will be provided automatically. With this we have then a valid fluid set which can then in the next step be applied for the um, optimization definitions where the first step is to provide a material and in this case it's of course air and after we have picked this out of the database the next step is to choose out which region slash body shall be considered for the optimization followed by the definition of the boundary conditions. So in this case a velocity inlet was applied and for the outlet and pressure outlet and static pressure outlet boundary condition was used. Last but not least the overall number of iterations needs to be defined and with this we are done as the um, computational mesh creation will happen automatically in the background. The simulation can be applied in parallel and after the optimization process has been converged we are then ready for the extraction um, of the free flow area which will be done based on the cutting value where an increased cutting value means to um, increase the overall volume of the geometry. By providing a multiple viewer one can then easily identify which is the most appropriate cutting value for the considered application. After having found the preferred setting, one is then ready 
in order to transfer the design proposal into a CAD surface, which is now happening by simply pushing the generate button. And important to, to mention is that this new design uh, will provide a tangential transition to the frozen zones downstream and upstream thanks to an applied uh, Katia blend feature. And last but not least, this geometry will then be applied for a validation run where simply the, the settings of the CFD model will be copied from the um, optimization CFD model to the validation CFD model. And with having finished this uh, CFD run, one can then easily um, identify based on the key information table um, how the optimized design has been improved. Now with the example shown here, the validation run was directly uh, conducted based on the rough design proposal. Typically, the user will go through a reconstruction process before in order to simplify the geometry, uh, make it according to or adjust it according to um, available manufacturing constraints. And as mentioned before, um, those functionalities for the reconstruction, they are embedded in the uh, GDF tool as well in our optimization uh, tool. And my colleague Pierre will now demonstrate how those um, reconstruction features can be applied within GDF. And with this, Pierre, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Jens. So hi, everybody. Um, I will introduce in this section really all the dedicated tools we are providing based on the optimization results. So as uh, Jens introduced it, um, it's reusing and leveraging all the Simulia capabilities for the simulation and the optimization, but also all the CATIA capabilities for the design reconstructions. So do we have control? Yes, it seems so. So um, we are providing all our best-in-class tools in order to help the user to reconstruct the design and to provide really a manufacturable design based on the optimization result. So if we look to the workflow, so we have the, 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 the complete workflow with the design space, the optimization and the automatic reconstruction. And we have also alternative track in order to, oops, in order to uh, create other uh, shapes and to provide a different level of attraction. So we have the polyhedral shape, which is uh, really the representation of the optimization result that we can reuse for manual reconstruction and multi-section uh, sketch reconstruction, which are providing several kind of um, um, strategy in order to have a circular shape, rectangular shape, or uh, elliptic shape. And then at the end, to be able to every time be plugged with the validation uh, and to, to measure the performances. So if we look to the first step, which is the generate shape. So this is really um, a, a specific functionality we have with all our generative design tools, is the capability to extract automatically and generate an exact shape from the optimization result. So it's fast, it's enabled quick and uh, robust validation and also realistic validation of the design. So this, as you are able to see, it's a one click button. You select the type exact geometry, the number of faces you want to see, and you have a subdivision, which is really a, a specific feature, which is associative and uh, will uh, keep all the specification of the optimization. So this is very detailed. It's good for quick and, uh, and, and, and robust validation. But if we want to go to uh, manual reconstruction or more uh, manufacturing reconstruction, we have what we call the polyhedral surface, which is exactly 
the same result as the, as the uh, optimization result. But why having this shape is mainly to be reused in other contexts. And I will see, uh, I will show you a kind of a, almost a live demo, uh, which is based on the optimization result, how can I leverage this polyhedral surface? So this is the specific uh, output we have. We click on the generate button, we have this result that is ready, ready to be reused. And based on that, I will use our free shape design commands in order to create manually uh, with our tubing uh, construction a shape. This shape is a subdivision, so it can be managed, it's very flexible, and as you can see, we are able to control every point in order to adjust the result based on some specification if you want to want if you want something to be very smooth and I'm able to move each point or each edge of my shape. And here in this example, quickly, I'm able to reconstruct a pipe that is smoother than the, than the exact geometry, and that will enable me to really uh, see how can I provide something that will be easy to print, easy to, to change in case of parametric optimization, etc. And we have functions that enable uh, the designer to directly reuse this shape, make automatically the junction, and based on that, perform a validation and to explore the uh, performances. And these are very uh, intuitive tools and very simple tools to use in order to, for you, keep creating new shapes from the optimization result. And this really enables us to be uh, very performant in terms of uh, a short uh, timing for the workflow and to have a really quick iteration between optimization result and reconstruction. We have also something uh, a little bit more uh, detailed, is if you don't want to use a subdivision. Uh, it has a lot of advantages, but sometimes you want to only use uh, exact uh, shapes with uh, specific wireframe feature. Uh, so for the, the, those that are familiar with Katia, we have uh, specific features that we could use as, as blend, as multi-section surfaces, etc. So here what we can do is, as we have the optimization result, we can create uh, automatically kind of the skeleton or the flow path of the optimization result. Why I'm doing this is because I will reuse this skeleton in order to create planes that will intersect my, um, my geometry. So based on that, we are really able to um, have several sections of the design that we will be able to reuse in order to create uh, what we call uh, sketch section sketches. So here I select all my plane. I could have created a lot of them or just few of them if I'm comfortable with that. And based on that, I'm really able to have approximation features that enables me to have a, a kind of a, a more details and a, an associative geometry uh, regarding the optimization result and not using the subdivision. So here I'm selecting all my kind of, uh, of abstraction feature strategy and then I will be able to, reusing this, uh, create uh, my multi-section sketch. So here just to have more control, I'm also uh, defining control points on each of my profile in order to have something really robust for any uh, usages or any um, uh, optimization capability for pa parametric optimization capability in the future. So here it's really all our tools uh, that can be plugged inside this optimization or after it in order to have really something uh, that can be easy and robust to reconstruct. Here we can see I have a, a, an exact shape uh, different than the, the subdivision that can be used, controlled by these sketches and really used in a, in a different purpose for parametric optimization. So, this was all the uh, reconstruction feature we are able to, to use. 
and uh, this center in uh, uh, all the targeted industry we want to uh, target uh, with this application and this new role. So we have of course transportation mobility in which uh, I think uh, GDF is able to handle a lot of uh, cases for the HVAC, for uh, so all the air conduction uh, system, uh, for water pump for example. Uh, these are really the very good examples that we could have in the scope of GTF. Of course, aerospace and defense with all the HVAC systems, but also the, the, the jet propulsion capabilities and of course rocket propulsion. So these are examples that can be also in the scope of GTF and that could, uh, in which we could provide a very uh, improved uh, pressure drop reduction. And of course, other examples with industrial equipment, energy process and utilities, and home and lifestyle. So, uh, based on that, this was really an introduction of our design capabilities. Uh, we define uh, the packaging and uh, the, the role and app we could use for uh, this uh, this uh, this role. So, in terms of packaging, we have. Uh, introduce the flow driven generative design application uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a role in which you have all the necessary command and all the needed command in order to complete the complete workflow, uh, which means that design preparation, but also design reconstruction. If needed, we have also a generative wireframe interface and part design essential that could help you to have uh, added commands for solid and surface reconstruction or preparation. And of course, assembly design to manage the assembly at the beginning. So in terms of uh, packaging, we, for the ones that we are familiar, familiar with it, we have uh, the, the GDE role with function driven generative designer. SGD role with structural generative designer. So both roles were really focused on structure topology optimization. And this new one, flow driven generative designer, GDF, uh, that was released um, in uh, FD03, that are really managing, uh, that is really managing the topology optimization for fluid. Um, so what is interesting to see is that now we have a holistic proposal for structure and fluid of topology optimization and all in the same platform, the 3D experience platform. So it's really a door opener uh, to uh, uh, combined application. And this is what I will introduce in the coming slides. We were able to illustrate, for example, with this HVAC, uh, with this, sorry, uh, hydraulic manifold block, um, how to combine Fluid optimization, fluid, uh, I mean pressure drop minimization, so fluid topology optimization, and structure optimization with the light weighting process. So an hydraulic manifold block is really uh, a massive piece of steel usually uh, that is making the junction between several uh, hydraulic equipment. And uh, due to the manufacturing process, so the mining process, doesn't have a very good performance in terms of uh, pressure drop and also in terms of weight which are really heavy and for some application for example in aerospace in um, uh, uh, in uh, in planes also that could be very uh, uh, important so what we did is uh, based on the 3d experience platform we combined both capabilities we started from the legacy block. We created some design spaces for each of the pipe, and then we optimize them. Based on this optimization, we perform the reconstruction of the pipe, and we validate the performances. Once the performances was uh, validated, we were able to reuse this shape as a frozen shapes in order to now find what was the best structure to fit around this optimized pipe. And this is really how we could combine our solutions in order to have at the end a really performance-driven part, 
not only performant in terms of fluid, but also performant in terms of structure. So let's see a video that introduces a complete uh, workflow. So here it's a two-step optimization. The first one, we will minimize the pressure drop. So as I said, we started from the, the legacy block. And based on this block, we were able to uh, see uh, where was the different design space we could have. Based on that, we performed the, the setup and we uh, were able to quickly extract the shape that is really difficult to uh, anticipate, uh, I would say, uh, only by knowledge or only by, uh, uh, by mathematics. And based on that, we performed the reconstruction and the validation. Here we are able to, to see and to measure all the flow, the fluid flow KPIs. And this we did it for each pipe. We uh, reconstruct them and we are reusing it as our input for the uh, structure optimization. So here all this pipe will be frozen because they are already optimized and all the rest of the block will be considered as our design space. We have also additional loadings, uh, so the pressure on the pipe, but also if the pipe, uh, how the, the block is fixed, etc. And then we are able to see and to perform exactly what is the exact structure of this uh, block. And then we have an optimized block that uh, have uh, really optimized and disruptive results in comparison to the initial uh, design. And uh, that is uh, aimed to be uh, reconstructed or aimed to be printed uh, with our additive solutions. So really, with this new role, we have introduced uh, some uh, um, key capabilities that could be first um, really uh, providing very optimized results in terms of pressure drop, but also when we are combining them with our other solutions, either the, the design reconstruction capabilities or the other topology optimization but for structure, we are able to achieve to really tremendous result in a very fast manner, in a really uh, a num in an embedded and a, a complete seamless approach uh, solution to achieve to really uh, specific cases that were really complex to manage and really asking uh, very complex skills and uh, timing in order to, to be able to manage uh, this. So now I will let uh, the floor to um, to Jens um, to manage uh, these extended workflows. Thank you, Pierre. So with this, we are coming to the second extended workflow where it's not only about topology optimization on the fluid side, but also to, to check what is the impact on the aeroacoustics, which is more likely to happen that we have here an impact because with minimizing the amount of recirculation, um, there is an, a good chance uh, to also reduce the overall noise. And this workflow, in this workflow, we start uh, with a design which is, let's say, close to uh, the, the, the geometry applied for a formal series. And what we here do is a lattice Boltzmann simulation and very large eddy simulation, which is able to first identify the available recirculation zones inside of the design and also predict what is the noise being emitted from those potential or from the recirculation areas. Assuming that we have those backflow areas available, the next step is then that we replace um, a distinct section of the design by a design space geometry and go in the second step through the topology optimization providing a new design proposal without any recirculation zones. And with having that um, we have a designer available at low pressure drop uh, which we can in step three fine-tune and in this example by, by transferring the topology optimized design into a concept shape 
And based on this concept shape, we can then, according to the videos here on the right hand side, let's try it again, uh, realize a significant change in the shapes. In this example here for the side walls, as well as for the bottom side of the duct geometry. And with having such a parametricized concept shape, we can then go through a parametric shape optimization within the suit experience, uh, which can either address and further decrease in pressure drop or address other objectives, like for instance, the mass flow distribution over multiple outlets. Now with this, we have um, improved the flow parameters. Now with step five and six, what we then do is to check, to, to quantify what is the impact on the emitted noise. Where in the first step, we use an vibroacoustic analysis in order to check um, the sensitivity of the new design for the resonances which were identified for the base design. And we've having checked that, let's say, the, the, the sound pressure level that we obtain as an output from this design is lower, it's then likely uh, that the new design is, is, is less noisy. And in order to analyze, do an uh, analysis uh, more in detail, we finally run a very large eddy simulation using Lattice Bolz, Boltzmann technology, which provides us then as a result uh, the, the sound pressure level distribution over the frequencies of interest. Now, as we have still six minutes, I just go into more details about this workflow, where here we see how the topology optimization were conducted based um, on the, um, on the um, design space geometry shown here on the left, also representing the baseline geometry. And what we can see is that uh, here in blue, the um, reconstructed design proposal, uh, that we have here significant changes at the flow splitter area on the one hand, and also next to the connection to the registers. And the validation run, which was done afterwards, showed that um, according to the new design proposal uh, provided by GDF, we see a reduction in, um, in backflow areas, um, here shown by the velocity plots, where we see we have low velocities here next to the transition from the um, optimized area, um, here on the right, uh, to the registers, which were not considered for optimization. And what we see is that those dark blue areas, they could be reduced um, according to the new shape of the optimized duct. And uh, to talk about numbers, with this new design proposal, we achieved a reduction of 60% and still an improvement regarding the uh, mass flow balancing over the two outlets. The next step was then to go through a parametric optimization where we applied um, SFE technology in order to create a concept shape. And this concept shape then allows to perform yeah, significant uh, design changes here for the side walls and on the bottom uh, also for the uh, bottom wall. And with then going through a parametric um, analysis here based on DOE followed by, an, um, by an, uh, going through a response surface creation and then uh, gradient optimization afterwards, we finally were then able to further reduce the available pressure drop. In order to then check what is the impact on the noise level, the first step was to go through a vibroacoustic analysis, where the, the outcome is uh, to, to, to check uh, what is the sensitivity um, of the new design um, regarding the resonances. And for the existing design, we had two major uh, frequencies with significant resonances, 800 and 1500. And for both of them, we see optimized design um, on the right-hand side that we, yeah, 
identify and, and, and decrease in the obtained sound pressure level. Now in order to quant quantify for the overall range of frequencies of interest, we finally run a um, very large eddy simulation and as a result of this we obtain a distribution of the sound pressure level like it is shown here on the right hand side where the optimized design is uh, the distribution is shown here in, um, in light blue and according to this plot we can identify that for uh, most of the uh, frequencies uh, for a significant range we see a reduction in the sound pressure level with this, I would like to conclude what we have discussed today. So we have introduced to, uh, to you a new topology optimization method, which provides an end-to-end -end workflow. And by minimizing the amount of recirculation, uh, providing a significant, typically a significant reduction in total pressure drop, and also um, as we have in correlation to um, surface uniformity and mass flow balancing also an improvement uh, for those quantities for many applications. As mentioned, we have an end-to-end -end workflow which also provides an assistant as this method is not only meant for CFD expert but especially for CAD designers, of course with a distinct um, background in fluid dynamics. And which is embedded in the method as well as not only the pure optimization workflow but also an automatic an automated conversion of the design proposal into a CAD geometry and as Pierre demonstrated also uh, power flow reconstruction uh, capabilities in order to transfer the design into something which can then be manufactured. We showed suitable application examples and last but not least enlarged workflows where the uh, fluid topology optimization were done together with the structural topology optimization on the one hand and what we demonstrated as well is a topology optimization added with an area acoustic analysis to check the impact on the noise creation and with this um, we are finished with the presentation.